American football in Finland. So Maple League teams are back in action on Thursday with the Butchers versus Crusaders, then the Wolverines versus the Roosters on Friday, and it ends with the Steelers versus the Crocodiles on Saturday. Let's spend a little bit of time looking to each of those matchups. First game, Butchers versus Crusaders. Uh, what's an interesting storyline or question for one of these teams? This will, this will be quarterback play, um, O-line and D-line play. Uh, I do think – UNC will win this game uh, only because I just think they have more talent. And and sometimes talent beats out coaching. Sometimes talent beats out uh, strategy. <laughs> sometimes mm-hmm. the guys that you got are just better. And I think uh, UNC will uh, just, just have more talent. I think they'll find a way to win these games. But um, offensive line play, if Brandon Grinnick Brandon gets some time to stand in there, he'll be all right. Same on the other side. So. Um, it'll be interesting to see what, what they bring as far as strategy against each other. Um, the Butchers got something on their hands. Obviously, that that uh, corner for the Butchers or nickel bag for the Butchers, he's going to have to pick and choose. Because he, if he playing, if he, if he guarding RJ like, he, like he's doing these finish teams, uh, uh, Sid is going to have a day. So yeah. um, <laughs> they're going to have to come up with a plan. Um, but I'm also excited to see because they're like evenly matched as far as offensive line and defensive line. So Actually, their defensive line probably may be better. I think so, I think the Butchers' defensive line is better than the Crusaders' defense as a whole, offensive line. I think their defense as a whole is better. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I, in my opinion, though, so, I, yeah. I, I agree with you. I think key matchup would be that Butchers' D line versus Crusaders' O line because again, I think the receivers of Crusaders are going to be all you need, but are they going to be able to get those throws off? I know they're going to the fade is what they're going to have to throw. But it's really hard to be accurate when it's like a one-two throw. And I think the Butcher's going to be able to create pressure. But I also, I can't forget, I keep forgetting that the Crusaders got Seth Rowland. That actually might be the, the difference maker. Him as both a runner and passer. I think he led their team in, in receiving last week, too, the last time they played. So that might be a really interesting thing. The other interesting thing is last week, the Butchers weren't able to play on their home field. They played on the, that other field in, in Port Vue, so they played on turf. Hopefully next week they play on grass. And I'm going to ask the same question I asked last week because I know the Crusaders got white jerseys too. How the white jerseys going to do on that grass field? I'm interested to know. I want to know if these grass stains happen or not. But, uh, <laughs> again, it, it really depends on what field they play on. But that's the Butchers versus Crusaders. I think both teams are going to play well. I think it'll be closer than what we think too. I don't think either team is going to blow out the other. I think it'll be close no matter what happens. Calling all youth skills players, quarterbacks, receivers, running backs, linebackers, cornerbacks, and safeties. If you were born between 2009 and 2003, this midsummer is your opportunity to shine. We'll be hosting our annual AFF Nordic Challenge 7 vs. 7 tournament in Helsinki on June 21st. Top performers will be selected to join the AFF Team Revo 7v7 travel team that will be competing internationally in the autumn season. Team Revo will also play for the European Championship in the spring of 2024. Due to field availability, registration will close once we meet the maximum number of participants. So head over to our website and sign up today. Registration can be completed at AmericanFootballInFinland.com forward slash Nordic dash challenge. So the next game would be the Helsinki Wolverines versus the Helsinki Roosters. I guess the Wolverines are home team, but, you know, it's the Helsinki Derby. It'll be at the Velodrome. What do you got for interesting storyline or question on this one? Uh, will the Roosters be able to get the passing game going a little more than they have in the last two games? This is a good time for them to show it. Uh, Wolverines obviously can't match up to them. Um, but uh, the quarterback for the Roosters, he needs, he needs to get it going. He needs to get his receivers some confidence in him. Give the organization confidence in him because obviously, yeah, you can run, um, but we also need you to throw the ball too. Um, so this will be a, a good game for them to work on a lot of the plays that maybe they couldn't get going against the other two teams or, you know, just need to tweak some things. But this is a game also for the, for a lot of those guys to get healthy, I think. But they have still have to play, still have to win. Um, but I don't think they're evenly matched at all on any side of the ball. Um, so nothing interesting as far as – 
it's far a, as what we about to watch. It, like it'll probably it's be, be a go good, out. It's gonna be a good scrimmage you know, but, for the Roosters. <laughs> yeah, good, good scrimmage for the Roosters and time for their other players to get to get some uh some rest. But um uh he the quarterback for the Roosters definitely has it has the no, just 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 get it out there. Let you guys, you know, get some passes, some touchdowns. Just get the confidence up. Um, they're zero and two right now, so they need a win. Um, and it feels good to win. You know, it feels good to get you that first win of the season. And you can calm down and regroup and and get back out there because right now zero and two. You know, it, it it doesn't look good. I know for the organization, it's not how they wanted the season to start out. So, um, luckily, you get the Wolverines now. <laughs> so, I, so I was, just, yeah. <laughs> So unless, you know, it's just something crazy all out happening in this Wolverine game, they should win. I'm not, yeah. you know, they should win. Like, so, um, but there ain't nothing interesting as far as, oh, they're going to have to stop this or they're going to have to do this. Like, it's just more so the Roosters uh, just getting more acquainted with, with the quarterback and the plays that they're calling and, and try to get them a win. I think the best part about this game, or most interesting thing will be if the – Helsinki Roosters can get the first 50 burger of the season. I see it. This is the game. This is it right here. This is the team that you can put up 50. Because if they're able to, you know, get better at the pass game, they should be able to get some quick scores. But also they have they still have three running backs on roster that can get them run plays and then the quarterback using his legs. If they're able to, you know, make this a glorified scrimmage. I want them to keep playing. I don't want them to put in their backups in the second half. I want them to keep playing, get that confidence. Also, get your stats up so that you don't look like bums early in the season compared to everybody else. I say take this game for everything it's worth. Put up 50, maybe even 60. If you put up 50, that's a 50 burger. You put up 60, that's a 50 burger with lettuce, tomatoes, and onion, and a little bit of cheese. So whatever you can do, I, I want to see a 50 <laughs> burger this week from the Roosters. We need a, we need a 50 burger. We yeah. Yeah, we need we need the first one of the season. Everybody's going like 30, 40, 45, I think the Steelers scored. But I need a 50. Just give me a good 50. And that, that means you got to go for two because if you go seven every time, you only get 49. So just remember one time, go for two. That way you at least get 51. Okay, so the last game of the weekend, <laughs> game of the week. And – Oh, I'm glad mm -hmm. they've been scheduling these Saturday games just like I like them. Tokyo <laughs> Steelers versus Senayoki Crocodiles. Okay, I got this one. This is oh, this is gonna be my baby. I'm excited about this game. <laughs> um, it it kind of sucks that the Crocodiles you know, front office didn't do what they're supposed to because we should be looking at a two and zero versus two and zero. This is for all the marble situation, but instead we're looking at two and zero and one and one. But it still would be for the marbles because if the Steelers, I mean, if the Crocodiles win, they would have <clears throat> they would have the tiebreaker because they beat that team. So that would be helpful. My question for for this game would be: Can the Crocs D line go all four quarters against the Steelers? I think that's where they in the last game we just saw them play against the Roosters. Them kind of letting the Roosters back into it in the second half had a lot to do with that D line just not maintaining that dominance and aggression as a group and as a unit. If they do this against the Steelers, they're going to be in trouble. I think the Steelers have the best offensive line in the league, so the Crocs aren't going to be able to be as successful early. But late in the game, for them to stay in the game, they're going to have to slow down the Anthony Reason over and put pressure on Ambro, make Ambro have – um, errant throws. Only way to do that is going to be with your front, your front, your uh, defensive front. Linebackers are okay, but they're not going to be able to give you the pressure that you need. And can they make it into the fourth quarter? Can they do this the entire game? Because that's what it's going to take. That's what it takes to beat the Steelers. It's going to take four quarters. You can't give them one quarter off. You can't go two quarters, give up the butt in the third, and then play good in the fourth. Because that's still a loss. If you lose any quarters to this team, you might lose this whole game. That's how it's going to come down to. So I, I hope that they can, because then we'll see a closer game. But if the Crocs D line don't hold up through the fourth quarter, it could get ugly late. And the Steelers are they're about that life. They they will just, you know, pile on at the end so you know that you really didn't have a chance. Key mm -hmm. matchup in this one, I'm saying Christian Powell versus the Steelers defense. I mm. think that it's gonna be again, I keep comparing it to the Roosters because I think that's probably the third best team in the league. But again, when the Crocs played the Roosters, you saw a team that, you know, quote, unquote, stopped Christian Powell in the first half. In the second half, they couldn't stop nothing. And that's the power of CP. I think the 
The Steelers' defense is similar to the Roosters' defense. Their D-line is good, not great. They have some ballers out there, but they can't be beat. Their linebacking core is the difference. Um, Achilles Leroy is probably the best linebacker in the league, and he he makes fit tackles. Him versus Powell might even be more of the matchup than the entire defense. It's can he consistently slow down or stop Powell so that the Crocodiles have to – so that the Crocodiles have to rely on Zach Whitehead and those receivers, which those receivers are probably better than whatever secondary that the Steelers have. But like I said earlier in the last episode, can you really trust them to be consistent? We don't know. So Powell versus Steelers defense. Interesting aspect about this one. I don't have one. I think the whole game is interesting. I think watching both of these two teams play for the first time, um, a rematch of last year's Maple Bowl. I think emotions are going to be high. Both teams are going to be aggressive. It's going to be interesting to see how Ambro does in this game where he might have to actually take on a little bit more of the responsibility of that offense for them to be successful because their defensive line is really good for the Crocodiles. But on the other side, are the Crocodiles a real deal this year? In the first two games they play, we haven't seen the team that we – saw at the end of last year. The team that, that played in last year, they were scary good. This Crocodiles team hasn't looked scary good yet. Now, the Steelers, on the other hand, they had one game where they looked okay, and then they had a, you know, a Wolverines game. So we really haven't seen what they're capable of either. And I do think their game against the Stockholm Mean Machine is kind of telling of what they're capable of when, you know, adversity hits. So the, the interesting aspect will be, if this is a close game, how reminiscent of the Maple Bowl will it be? Will we see two great teams play or will we see one team, you know, arise to the occasion and the other one fall off? Anything to add on this last game? Well, you hit every aspect of it. <laughs> <laughs> you hit every aspect of it. And uh, I think, like you said, it was going to be Chris Powell, I mean, uh, Christian Powell against uh, their, their, their defense, their corporate defense. And if they, if they can – if they can hold him from any big hits, uh, they might win this one, uh, you know, pretty pretty soundly. But if, if he's having a day where he, you know, one of those 100, 200 yard games, ooh, this might be a close one because yeah. I don't think Corpio is equipped to. I'm not saying they're not equipped to come back from being down, but I know that's a position that they probably don't want to put Ambro in. And, uh, you know, reason over is going to be reason over. So, uh, Crocs obviously got to get ready for that. Um, I think it'll be harder for him. Um, because the Crocs actually know this team very well. They played against Corbio very, very well. And and um I think this right here will be a real the biggest test right now for Corpio. This yeah. I, even more than the Roosters game. I think this will be the biggest test for Corpio by far because the Crocs actually have people um on defense, not saying the Roosters didn't or anybody else did, but they actually have guys on there. Eric Irvin is is, is he's a lurker. Um and it's possible if Ambrose doesn't pay him attention. Or doesn't look him off, he'll yeah. he'll pick some, you know. True. So this is so so this will this will be very important to see how how they you know come at them as far as throwing the ball. I mean, third and longs, uh, Ambrose is really gonna have to make some plays. I think he can, I think he will, um, but it'll be nice to see what they do as far as trying to control reason over. They might sell out on stopping reason over, but I'm excited to watch this game. Actually, like I'm I'm very yeah. very excited to watch this yeah. game. So it's gonna be a good. Uh, one. We'll see. Yeah. Right now, our pick them ranking in first place: Chris Green, six and zero, always with the safe picks. Tied for second, tie, a three-way tie for second place at five and one is me, Perfect Purvis, Spencer Cutler, and Coach Q. All right, and then in last, yes, <laughs> and in, in last because he missed the first week is Finland Swami, two and one. Uh, we also have guest um, panelists. From last week, but I'm not keeping up with their scores just in case. Madeline did, did, Madeline, you did horrible. See, I didn't want to. I, that's why I don't want to keep up with the scores. But yeah, <laughs> I think he was one and two. But we we might let them back next week, anyways, just to keep things fun, guys. Just keep it fun. But uh, picking winners is not easy, but we we try and we give it a shot. So since we already talked about each of the upcoming games, let's go over who we're picking and why very briefly. And then again, our picks will be on Instagram at American Football in Finland, where you can make your comments and let us know who you think. But Q, who do you got this week? I'm going, I'm going Crusaders, Roosters, 
and the crocodiles. I think the crocodiles will pull it off. You going crocodiles? I'm going crocodiles. I think they're gonna pull it off. Corpio, oh, okay. don't be mad at me, man. You know, Corpio think I'm anti Corpio anyway, so I'm just going with the narrative that y'all got against me. Think I just you, don't be going it, but I'm not. I'm, you gotta I'm, explain I'm, those I'm picks. Not saying, you gotta explain I'm not those explain picks. Them. <laughs> well, well, for one, for one, UNC. I just think UNC talent wise is 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 gonna is gonna win over uh, Porvo. Um, I think Porvo will make some some plays in this game, but um, Mickey Mickey Kai might actually have a big game this game because he doesn't really have to. Uh, he doesn't. I, he he doesn't have to worry necessarily about their defense just being overbearing. Um, yeah. So Mickey Kai can have a good, you know, and going to running the ball. So, um, but I do think you know with RJ and said that's that's going to be a lot. I think they'll get up early and then it'll be hard for uh, Portland to come back. Um, the Roosters and Wolverines. I mean that's that's obvious. The Roosters just <laughs> overpower. They're going to overpower the Wolverines. The Wolverines don't have much, so I won't dwell on that one. But um, the Crocs and the Steelers are really the reason I say that is because I just think Ambrose, uh, I think Ambrose will make some mistakes and it's going to cost them. It's mm. going to cost them, and, and I think Powell is going to have a big game. I, I reason over is going to ball too, but I just think Powell is going to have a big game. Well, uh, if we're staying with the picks, got my papers, I got something I want to say here. But uh, Chris is picking the Crusaders, the Roosters, and the Steelers. We know that's why he's picking those guys. Me, I'm going Butchers. Roosters, Steelers. Now, the reason I'm going Butchers over UNC is kind of what I saw in the first the first drive against the Royals and a little bit of what you said about UNC's defense not being able to give them enough pressure. If you take the pressure off that offense, they're golden because they they can chew clock. Um, that first drive they had was like five or seven minutes or something like that. Like their their first touchdown drive was very long, but it was efficient. If they're able to do something like that similar, if they're able to get Mickey J involved as well as pass the ball around a little bit and then let Brandon Gwinter do what he does with his legs and his arm, they they can drive the field, hit them big late whenever UNC decides, okay, we need to bring pressure because Mickey J is killing us. They're going to be able to find somebody over top, Lucas Arela, Christian Nottenen, somebody, Miko Seven, somebody's going to be able to make a play because I don't think UNC has anybody on the back end to really – contain that so that gives them the advantage i think that when unc has the ball they'll be trying to score quickly catch up and that's going to give them some situations to get out of and I, I don't see being able to pass as efficient as the royals were because i don't think their quarterback will be able to escape pressure like timothy morovic was i don't think their quarterback is up to the challenge now the roosters again obviously they're better than the wolverines now the steelers okay i understand what you're saying about, you know, Ambro and you don't want to make Ambro have to go do it. But I'm going to say it like this. If it can, if it come down to it, if it come down to it and you need one play and you got, you got it, it's got to be a pass play. Let's say you get them in a situation where they can't run, they have to throw it. And Ambro throws a pass and Hannes Haru is in the vicinity of said pass. And then on the other side of the ball, you have the crocodiles. Thomas Anthony Anasiatis, are you going to take his cookies? And that's going to be that. Because number five, <laughs> I, 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 I see it. Number five for the Crocodiles, <laughs> Thomas Anasiatis, can't guard Hannes Haru. And that's a finished kid. That finished kid is going to give the Crocodiles secondary fits. Like, they're not going to be able to do much. Um, don't really care about Eric Irvin out there because he's basically an extra linebacker for them. I am concerned that Yohani Kobamaki getting around the ball. He's such a great defender. That might be a, an issue for Ambro is not seeing Yohani because he does that um, that rope a dope defense playing at linebacker where you can't see that he's there and then you throw the ball and he he knows the angle because he used to play mm-hmm. safety and he gets there he shows up at the last second the ball's already gone that might be an issue but if Ambro can just get Hannes on uh, number five one on one. It's a wrap. Them tutties. Them tutties <laughs> all day. Them tutties. That's how I feel about it. Say like free booty. <laughs> free booty. That's all it is. I, I think that uh, ultimately, I don't think they'll have to do that. I think the Crocs won't be able to stop him. I think that the way that he plays and the way they get him the ball is going to be too much for the Crocodile. Com- combined with the fact that Ambro can get the ball to Hanez at any moment, which will mean that defense can't focus on Lee. Obviously, if me or you were running the defense, we would prefer to lose to Hanez, right? 
we both know that this is Finland and people just refuse to do that type. I've I've only seen one team do it so far, and that was with the Roosters when they kind of changed their entire defense for the Steelers. But at times, once the Steelers were able to pass it, they went away from it. And then Lee Anthony ended up getting his, which is what the Crocs will do. They'll say, oh, we're going to stop the run. Oh, we stopped it. No, you didn't. You can't ever stop, stop the run. You got to make that a non-point. They won't do that. I think that's why the Steelers will win because they'll they'll just be the better team. Valid, valid, valid points there, sir. <laughs> valid, valid points. We shall see. <laughs> yeah, we shall see. If you're listening to my voice, you're now part of the AFF community. But don't be shy about supporting us. Head over to our website and order some AFF swag. Get a t-shirt for this beautiful summer weather. Or a comfy hoodie you can rock all year long. And if you really want the drip, scoop up one of our limited edition snapback caps. Everything you need to represent the AFF community can be found on our website at AmericanFootballInFinland.com forward slash merch. T-I-F. And never forget, T-I-F. That's it for this episode of American Football in Finland. Hope it was worth the listen. Any last words before we get out of here? No, no. We're going to see we're going to see what happened this weekend. Uh, it was definitely a good weekend last week of football, man. So this, you know, game of the day, I mean, game of the week is going to be great. My daughter is excited for it. She's yeah. all over the place. She's going to be watching. So uh, we, we're going to see, man. Let's see, Corpio. Let's see, Crocs, Roosters. Uh, let's see a bounce back game and, and get a dub. So here we go. Uh, my my thoughts would be, Roosters, I'm not mad at y'all for not winning last week. Messing up my pick em. Uh, I, again, I felt like they could have won, but this week, uh, I went with the Dallas Cowboys. So, I mean, just think about it, butchers. Just think about it. I, I'm, I'm went on, went on a limb for you guys this week. I'm gonna need y'all to come through and play how I know y'all can play. Uh, everybody else, if you got an issue, you know, find me in the DMs. I don't care. So, if you enjoy the show, please follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Podbean, YouTube, and wherever you listen to your podcast. And don't forget to rate us five stars as well. Anything less will tell us you are a hater. You can follow us on the gram and Facebook at American Football and Fitness. Until next time, never forget T-I-F. We go. And we go. American Football in Finland.